What is up, my dudes, and that one girl who's just here for the juicy gossip? This is Bikes, Beards, and Brews. Let's kick that intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we kick this one off, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. New videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Just hang out, man. Uh, if there's not a video, wait two minutes, there will be. So let's get the other stuff out of the way. Want to save 10% on a Cardo communicator? Check my referral link down below. Want to support me in all my do-gooderness like these cool guys here? Boom! Then you should become part of the brew crew and join the coffee page down below. Want to know why I'm asking you for money? Well, spoiler alert, it's not to buy all all the beer in Boston and just see if I can drink myself into a coma. It's for a good cause. That link is down below next to the 5,000 Amazon links that are also for a good cause. All right, guys, so let's get into this one. So as most of you know, a couple weeks ago, there was a pretty massive leak for the 2023 Harley CVOs, most specifically the Street Glide and the Road Glide. I did a video on it. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I feel like I went into some pretty good details there and answered a lot of questions based on the information that we had at the time. Now, I also said, these might be real, they might not. I didn't have a verifiable source, so I didn't want to 1000% commit to saying these were coming. Well, since that has happened, Harley has just all but said these are real. And the fact that they actually fired the people who leaked the pictures. So Harley, if you were trying to keep this a secret, if you were trying to keep some doubt out there, you kind of failed by firing these people. If you just pretended that nothing was going on, nothing was happening, ignore the man behind the curtain, there would still be that debate whether these were real, they were Photoshop, they were AI, whatever. But yes, these are coming. Now, one of the rumors that I've heard is they're going to come out by July, which makes sense because that's right around the Harley homecoming. So I, again, I mentioned it in the last video, I really feel that these are going to be debuted at the Harley homecoming fest. So if you get a chance to get out to Milwaukee, this would definitely be a good reason to do so, so you can see these firsthand. However, some new pictures have leaked, and I wanna go into some details about some stuff that I saw and what to expect, and maybe some of the rumors and some of like the, the assumptions of what's gonna be coming with this stuff. So I thought that this would justify making a second follow-up video for this, you know, whatever. So let's get into that now. All right, so the first thing I wanna get into is one of the new pictures that leaked shows the dashboard on what's obviously the Street Glide because it's got that gray trim like you know the picture that we saw before. And the first thing that you see is just an enormous TFT screen. So this is their new like boom audio or whatever they're going to brand it. However, one of the other things you kind of notice is it's a pretty clear shot of that dashboard, the gas tank, the console, and I'm not seeing any analog gauges, which leads me to believe that all the gauges are going to be digital and on this TFT screen along with everything else. Now, personally for me, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, the stereo that I did install on my bike just recently has that option, but I also have my analog gauges. So if I don't wanna see that, I don't have to. The other thing with that is, honestly, you are one electrical issue away from not having any gauges, period, if this is true. So, I mean, there might be gauges somewhere, but from the shot that we have right here, it looks like they may be going all digital and encapsulating it all into that screen that looks to be about a 12 inch touch screen. So, I mean, we're talking like tablet size at this point, like, you know, iPad, Android tablet, something like that. We're, we're not talking like you're just normal cell phone size or the slightly bigger version that we've been getting over the years in a Harley Davidson. So the next thing is people had brought it up before and I didn't talk about it because I couldn't really confirm it, but it does lean more towards this is a thing. It looks like there's going to be an adjustable windscreen on these. Now I've seen people go right down the line, especially in my comments for the last video where they absolutely hate the idea of an adjustable windscreen or they absolutely love it. I mean, there doesn't seem to be a middle ground. For those of you who hate it though, I mean, 
just set it and forget it. It's not like you have to get on the bike and raise and lower it every single time. Wherever you put it, that's where it's going to be. Um, I did mention in the last video, and I do want to reiterate it, I really hope it's a manual one and not an electric one. Like when you're looking at the Pan America, it's just a lever and you just go up and down with the lever. Um, mainly because I know people who own Indians, I know people who have been running those electric windshields on their Indians. And I I have heard so many complaints about the motor just having issues, burning out, whatever. So let's let's just keep this one simple, Harley. You know, make it manual, make it so, you know, it's just one little switch, you flip it up or down, that'd be great. If you got a couple stops in between so, you know, you can find your happy medium, that's fine as well. And again, for those of you who hate this, just set it and forget it. You don't have to use it. All right, so let's go over to the Road Glide and let's look at the front of the Road Glide and get into a few new things because we do have some new pictures. They're a little bit clearer. And honestly, like I said in the last video, I think the, the pictures that we had last time were just bad angles because they did look a little doofy. And from the side, it looked enormous. Well, the newer pictures definitely look correct. They look size correct. They, they just look proportionately correct now. And honestly, this shark nose looks way better because of that. And I'm really excited about that. The first thing is if you look at the headlight, I know some people, again, have compared this to Indian. And the thing is with like the Indian Challenger, they just use a single round headlight and then they've got their directionals that come down the side. I'm honestly not a huge fan of that look. I don't like that single round headlight. That's actually one of the reasons why I gravitate it towards the Rogue Glide in the first place. I like the dual headlights or I like some sort of bigger, blockier headlight. Harley has done that on this. If you look at that bearing, the headlight is more like octangular than it is like just a single round headlight. So just overall, I like that look more than Indian. And quite honestly, I mean, Harley, you've been able to do this for a while because I have bought the aftermarket shark tooth headlight that looks like this and put it in my bike. Quite honestly, a lot of the stuff that they put on this bike I've already done to my bike, so I see no reason to upgrade. But for people who want something that's out of the box or they're looking for something completely different, here you go. Now with that headlight, um, if you look at the directionals, I mentioned before that there is definitely a space between the headlight and the directional. So you still have those ram air vents and I'm really hoping Harley goes back to open and close vents because I've definitely heard a lot of complaints of people, you know, since they've removed that who get really upset when they're riding in like rain or colder conditions and stuff like that. And they can't close those vents. So, you know, they're getting blasted with freezing cold air or they're getting blasted with rain and stuff like that. Harley put those vents back in. But one of the things that I have noticed is with the directionals, there's actually um, just a, a little sort of LED bar that comes down the directional and goes towards the front of the fairing. And it looks like it kind of wraps around that headlight. So that's probably going to be like a full-time running uh, directional light. It's probably going to go clear when you're not turning. And then half of it will like, you know, blink amber and the other half will stay like, you know, uh, white when you are turning. I like that look. It looks cool. I like the whole thing. And I like the fact that it's not just a bunch of little like, you know, LED light dots. Like it is a nice, just full complete bar. And um, I'm really hoping that that's what it's going to look like when it's on, because I hate that. Like, you know, when you see like LEDs in like a long bar sort of form and it's just dot, 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 dot. It's that's just ugly. Give me a nice consistent light straight across the board and I'm good. And that looks like what Harley is bringing to the party here. So I am again, very excited about this. Another thing you'll notice about the front of this bike is the fender is so much smaller. Now, this has been a gripe that I've had for the Touring models forever. Those giant front fairings just look clunky and ugly. I couldn't wait to get rid of mine. So to see like Harley actually like put a smaller one on there and make this look like sportier, make it look a little bit more aggressive, that is great. Like again, good on you, Harley. I, I am personally excited about the changes that are coming with these two bikes. So, I mean, this is another thing where I think this is great. And um, I think it's just awesome that Harley is doing it. So like I said in the last video, good on you, Harley. Seriously, good on you. 
All right, so one of the other things I noticed is with the CVOs, a lot of times you get those like extended fairings that come down around the frame of the bike and they kind of meet at the bottom around the oil cooler and stuff like that. If you look at these pictures, these extended um, sort of fairings are much shorter. And that's because if you look, they butt up against a much larger oil cooler. So that is Harley trying to keep this engine cooler and making it run more efficient. And again, I think this is a great move. And it really is all kind of like blend it nicely. It all works together nicely. It's not like, you know, the sports duress and stuff where they have that big clunky cooler on the front or like, you know, stuff like Indians doing where again, they have that big clunky cooler on the front. This, this all works like the line work looks great. So I think this is awesome. And this is definitely a great change. And again, awesome Harley, you guys are doing great. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so let's get to the side of the bike now. Uh, I had mentioned in the last video that it looked like it had a much bigger air cleaner, and now we have that nice side view, and yes, this thing is a monster of an air cleaner. But at the same time, it looks like it's staying pretty close to the bike, which is great, because those snorkel ones they use, Anyone that's over like 5'8 will tell you that they're always bashing their knee against that thing. It's just annoying. So this looks like they've kind of solved that problem. They, they still have this monster air cleaner that can just pull in a lot of air, feed that engine, but still stay kind of like low pro to the side of the engine for us taller guys. And I really appreciate that. And honestly, I like the way this one looks. I've never been a big fan of those snorkel ones. This is cool. I like this and uh, like, I, I can't say it enough, like good job Harley. Like I am really happy with like what you were doing. I don't think these are perfect bikes, but the fact that you are absolutely like, you know, kind of pushing the envelope when it comes to like grading on like Harley scale of changes and differences, I think is awesome. These look great, that air cleaner looks awesome. The next thing is, if you go down towards the bottom of the engine, you're gonna notice that the transmission case and the cam box look different. Like the, the cam chest cover looks different. It's not just that normal round one they have. And the transmission definitely looks a whole lot different. These are VVT engines, which is variable valve timing engines. Seriously, that is hard to say. <laughs> Basically, if you're not familiar with VVT, what it means is you can get more torque, you can get more horsepower out of like the same engine, except you're going to have better fuel economy and it's going to make, um, it's going to hit EPA standards much easier. So essentially what they're doing is they're still staying with that air-cooled engine that most Harley riders really gravitate to in the first place, which I think think is great while giving you more horsepower and more torque without having like the 191 engine in there that gives you 95 horsepower. So I, I suspect that this 121 is going to put up some big numbers. I, it might actually go toe to toe with the 135 when tuned correctly. And I think that is awesome. And I think that it's great that, you know, they've definitely like focused on staying with air cool while also maintaining that EPA standard. Now, I know some of you might go, oh, well, you know, blah, 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 whatever country you're in. These EPA standards, the uh, Euro five standards, stuff like that. These are global. So the, like, keep your local politics out of this. This is not what it's about. This is, this is very much a global thing that they have to deal with. And a lot of times the EU standards are way more strict than the U S standards. Um, and that's a lot of times where Harley has their eye towards because that's the stuff that they're trying to meet now. So they don't have to build two separate bikes for two separate countries. All right, so the last thing I want to get into was last video I mentioned that the front has inverted shocks and I think that is awesome. I mean, you talk to anyone who's ridden a Harley, some of the biggest complaints you're gonna hear are suspension and seat are absolutely garbage. Um, so those inverted shocks on the front are absolutely fantastic. But one of the things that I was thinking about is historically when Harley puts inverted shocks on the front, they tend to go with a mono shock in the back. So we might actually be seeing the beginning 
of the bagger series where you actually get a mono shock on these and we're done with those dual shocks and quite honestly if you've never seen the dual suspension on the back of a bagger i highly suggest you take off the bags and take a look you're actually only using one shock it's on one side the other one is a slave shock that just balances out your bike which is part of the reason why the suspension is garbage only one of those is adjustable the other is a slave shock that's just there so your bike doesn't lean. It is dumb. So going to the mono shock is just smart. And if you've ever ridden like any soft tail line bike, you'll know that the suspension is so much better in the back with a mono shock. And if you've ridden some of the newer bikes that are using the inverted shocks on the front and the mono on the back, it is night and day over what Harley has been offering for years. So putting that on a bagger is incredibly exciting and I cannot wait to see and actually take that for a ride and see how that feels because that uh, again Harley congrats <laughs> like you it seems like you actually listen to people this is awesome like it, you listen to your fan base and I am quite excited about that now the other thing I'll say is Pricing hasn't been put out there because again, these are all leaks. I would honestly expect this to be in the 50,000 range, maybe low 50s. The reason for that is the CVO that already came out is at the 60 range, but that also has a full size tour pack. It has a driver backrest. It has the lower fairings. It has a lot of stuff like so it's geared towards touring historically speaking harley tends to price the touring bikes like the full dress touring bikes higher than like just a normal touring bike so expect to see these coming in right around 50k although the fact that it is full led the inverted shocks most like a lea mono shock your first vvt engine the 121 inch uh, cubic inch engine it could push higher but i'm really expecting right around that fifty thousand dollar mark but we shall see down below what do you think the price is going to be all right guys that's what I got for you. So did you see anything new here? Are you excited to see these come out? Are you not excited? Do you wish they would just stay with the previous generation? What do you think the prices are going to be? Sound off down below. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification, share this video with friends, share it with family, share it with that one dude you know who's like, oh, Harley only just puts out new paint jobs every year and nothing else. He loves this stuff, trust me. And I'll see you all on the flip side.